Age of Ultron's powering away already, but that finale, what the hell happens? And what does it all mean for the MCU? Quicksilver's kaput. He's gone, back to non-existence. This means that audiences no longer have to whine about two Quicksilvers. But it's also the defining factor in the birth of Scarlet Witch. Had he not died, she'd have no real reason to rip out Ultron's heart, and no real reason to join the new Avengers initiative after the dust settles. We also see the effect that strong negative emotion can have on her powers. She regains composure quite quickly, but the seeds have been planted for a potential House of M level freakout. The final confrontation sees Vision kill Ultron, but not before a final reflective conversation on humanity as a whole. Ultron sees us as a plague on the Earth. Vision sees us all as beautiful, unique snowflakes. They're on opposing sides. Big shock there. What it does touch on, though, is that both firmly believe our time on this planet is limited, that we're doomed. The conversation skirts beautifully around the subject, leading us squarely to the Infinity War. And remember the whole fact that there's a stone in Vision's head? Thanos is going to want that, and he's going to stop at nothing to get it. After doing his part in saving Black Widow, Hulk does a runner in the Avengers Quinjet. Widow attempts to get him to turn the jet around, but he ignores her. Later, we find out that he ditched the jet and could be somewhere near Fiji. This is clear proof that after his big outburst in the film, Banner's starting to learn how to control the Hulk, but he still feels uncomfortable around people. This entire plot point of him disappearing is so that Hulk's whereabouts are taken care of. We don't need to constantly ask where he is. He's laying low. Thor has a crazy Scarlet Witch-induced vision in the middle of the film that he takes to heart. In the vision, he sees the Infinity Stones, and after the fighting's all done, he heads home to research them. This means that the stones are now Thor's bag. They aren't going to be clogging up Civil War, and they will probably play a big part in Ragnarok when it finally arrives. This is backed up by the tone of Thor's vision, the future he sees for Asgard, and in a similar way to Stark, the pressure on his head to ensure that it doesn't happen. So, Hawkeye has a family, probably the only thing you won't see coming in the film. After the events of Age of Ultron, Hawkeye returns to his family, ready to live a normal life for a while. But in line with his experiences with mind control going into the film, this nice little reveal affirms his place in the Avengers as a unit. Not only is Hawkeye off to live in the sticks, but Stark makes mention of settling down and building a farm for Pepper too. That, and he lets Steve assume control of the new Avengers, no questions asked. While Stark's already kind of retired, but not really following Iron Man 3, this respite might allow him to sit back and think hard about the realities of a world in which enhanced humans can exist. Maybe it'll get him thinking all the way into conversations with the government in the run-up to Civil War. One of the more understated chapter closures at the end of the film, Cap reveals that while the man that went into the ice had aspirations, hopes and dreams of a wife and family, that man never came out of the ice. He's finally moving on from his man out of time status. Cap instead, and maybe very unhealthily, decides to dedicate his entire life to work, immediately. The final shots of the feature itself are of Steve Rogers and the ragtag group of fringe heroes who will one day become the new Avengers, War Machine, Vision, Scarlet Witch, and Falcon. Given the way the film ends, the scope of the facility, and the figures involved, it can be argued that the new Avengers team will operate as a streamlined version of S.H.I.E.L.D., but without the government ties. Steve also needs a team to back him up during Civil War, and this could be it. And finally, after the initial part of the credits, we see a shot of Thanos removing the gauntlet from what appears to be a safe. The gauntlet's missing its stones, and he mutters about having to do everything himself as he slips it on effortlessly. This essentially points to where we already know we're headed. Thanos wants the stones, and when he gets them, nothing good can happen. While we've had hints at this being where we'd wind up, we finally have the confirmation in him putting the gauntlet on and directly addressing the lack of the stones. It's worth noting that the gauntlet appears in Odin's vault in Thor, so unless they're gonna retcon that situation, there could either be an alliance with Loki, or a siege on Asgard on the horizon. Any we missed? Let us know in the comments below, and please remember to subscribe.